first, just like for people who don't know who you are, if you want to talk. <laughs> just introduce yourself in whatever way you want. All right. Let's see. How do I say this concisely? My no, name need is, to be concise. My name is Lil, which is what regular people know me as, but I am known also as Milk Tea in the competitive Super Smash Brothers community. And uh, it was an interesting story how I found myself there. Uh, I grew up in a restaurant with my family my entire life, and my brother and I would sit in the back just mash buttons away. We'd like challenge friends we met. You had like a TV in the back? Or yeah. how did you? Oh, cool. There's like this little tiny room, and we just camp out there and play video games. Eventually, we ended up at an anime convention, and we met a couple other guys that were interested in improving. And they dragged me out to my first tournament in Connecticut. How old are you at the time? Ooh, 17 maybe, and I'm 24 okay. now. Yeah. So it was a while back, and I wasn't going to enter initially. I just knew I was not a part of the rest of the competitors, and they went and signed me up behind my back. Really? Yeah. They like signed your name, and then your name got called, and you were just like, just walked over and was like, I put your name down and paid for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I met a ton of friends there, and. Uh, one of my friends currently works at MLG as a producer, oh, so it's just okay. crazy how things, how far things go back. Um, yeah, so I guess I've been a part of the community for seven years now, nearing eight, but I have not competed in several years. I competed yeah. very intensely for the first, second, maybe third year. Um, I'm still interested in improving, but real life kind of got in the way. Yeah. School, art school. So how would that, like the very first competition, when like with you, without even like preparing mentally, if you just had to go like straight into it, what was that like? Like the one where they signed you up for it? Um, I think I laughed a lot, probably made a lot of excuses. I played one of the worst characters in the game. I had no idea what the tiers were at the time. Yeah. Broy, I don't know if you're familiar with him. But uh, everyone was really encouraging, especially since I was like one of the few females. They were more yeah. encouraging to see me participate. That's so kind of nice, nice that they supported you instead of being like, "Why is she here?" Yeah, and like, oh, that's cool. So then, like after that first one, was that the one that sort of in gave you the idea to keep competing, or um, how did you like? How did you get into that? Well, I was always. Um, somewhat of an outcast at my school. So finding community that was so uh, accepting and comforting was great. And I soon went, out to a, went to a national tournament after that local tournament. Yeah. And the national had people from all over the place, California, yeah. Massachusetts, different states just huddled together. I made more friends there. I think I met my first boyfriend there too. Really? Yeah. Wow. Just, wow. And from there it blew up. MLG took off, they picked up Smash, and I just kept meeting people back to back to back. Yeah. So I couldn't I couldn't leave. They became my friends. It was like going to tournaments was seeing my friends. It's still That's cool, yeah. So was were you always talking about video games? Was that like the main thing that that was that the glue or do you think it was like just something else? Like your just your personality or mentality made you click? Definitely a mix of all of the above. Yeah. Um, I've discussed with my friend about this, you know, what is it about gamers that make us stick together? And we concluded with the theory that gaming is almost like kind of putting yourself into an alternate reality mm -hmm. while seeking mm -hmm. something. And that really helps strengthen the bond between everyone there. That's kind of interesting. Like, I, I agree with that also with travel like when you travel with people there's something that happens between you that just you can't get in in anything that you're doing in daily life just at home i kind of that makes sense but i never actually thought of it that way yeah so i'm trying to think like how to what direction to take this in there's so much that i want to know about um so talk about like your role in that community like now i mean you became pretty well known from what i've heard um, let's see. I currently am advocating for better treatment of women in our community mm -hmm. in order to expand. Because competitive gaming and gaming in general is on such a rise right now, it's incredible. And I feel like we might hit a wall if we don't get past this demon in the closet misogyny sexism thing. Yeah. I know it's so over, overly talked about, but it's very mm. important. And like, I've Googled 
competitive com gaming on New York Times and other uh, big sites, and some of the main articles that pop up deal with sexual harassment of women, and yeah. it's not a good look. Yeah. No, it is true, like, on the one hand, it feels like every every time you check the news about gaming, like, there's gonna be something about either, hey, check out, women have done this, or, oh no, like, yet another, like, mm -hmm. crazy thread on the internet that's, like, super insulting. Um, but it's true, like, in a way, we don't have a choice but to keep talking about it. Um, so, like, what's your personal approach when you try to... Alright, so let's see. For the longest time, I was really resentful of the Smash community, despite how much I enjoyed it. Yeah. I just hated all the derogatory names I was called for having dated a few top players. So uh, it was like specifically you, like the way they had treated you, not just like what you'd seen yeah. around you. Which, Especially because yeah. I was uh, milky, not even me so well known because I've dated more well known players. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was kind of a side effect. I'm sure some people could brush it off, but nevertheless, I absorbed a bit of it. And once Melee was picked up by Evo, which is a really big, I don't know what you call it, gaming franchise, um, I just couldn't feel the same excitement as everyone. So mm -hmm. I realized at some point I need to release my story on why I feel this way. So everyone can kind of understand and get on the same page as me. Yeah. I released it, and it was totally deliberately left vague. I didn't like, want to point yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. You released it like in the form of just the a blog post, post, or yeah. There's two, yeah. only two posts I've made so far. But the first one wasn't trying to make a point or be persuasive. It was just a simple. This is how I felt. Mm -hmm. This is what I experienced, and it got some backlash. But overall. People were really supportive, and I thought maybe it was just me because I was kind of in the limelight. But yeah. lots of women reached out to me saying, "This is exactly how I feel." Yeah, yeah. Um, so at that point, I realized that I'm obligated to post this. Uh, I know that a lot of women feel mm -hmm. that way, but they mm -hmm. aren't willing to speak up, and that's understandable because being a vocal minority sucks. Yeah, or also, I mean, you you kind of feel, or maybe you feel like you put it out there and just it gets lost in cyberspace. Like, nobody's gonna hear it, nobody's gonna care. I mean, that's another thing is, even if you feel like it's really important, when you have no idea how many other people out there feel the same way you do, you're just gonna be like, mm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It initially started out as a private post only meant for my friend's eyes, but because mm. of all the positive support I got from even friends that were clueless I felt this way, I made it public, and it kind of grew, and this whole thing just fell into my lap. I wasn't intending on really pushing this cause further. Yeah. And even like now, like I recently came back from the TED conference and I was like, you know. Wait, what was it on, by the way? Which TED conference was it? Oh, it was the TED 2014 in Vancouver. Oh. So one of the, the main one, I would guess you yeah. could call it. But I came back from there and I was like, you know what? I need to step away from the gaming community. I'm done with this. I really? Just, I can't deal with this anymore. Like that's your feeling right now, just from having come back. That's the Order. thing. So I left TED and I went directly to a tournament in San Francisco and it sparked oh. <laughs> everything all yeah. over again. And it's like, I guess I'm passionate about this because I feel like this is the one thing I'm qualified to talk about yeah. as an LT in the Smash community, but also because I feel like someone needs to do this. Yeah. And I don't know who will take who else over it would be. if yeah. it's not me. So I, yeah. feel, I really do feel obligated, whether I want to or not. And what kind of outlets do you want to plug into now? Like, we, do you want to go on YouTube, or do you just want to keep blogging, or do you like conferences, or like what's? I'm I'm curious what the best way is to to like reach out to people. Well, I've got a few plans lined up. Some are confidential. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I would like to release one or two more posts, mm -hmm. and I will be hosting a panel to raise awareness in other fighting game communities other than Smash Brothers because it's pretty consistent throughout other mm -hmm. scenes as well. But further along down the road, I would like to start a trial and error process. Like instead of awareness, we shift into action. Mm. And the key there is letting the community know that I don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing. We're gonna make mistakes. Yeah. But there is no right straight shot path to success. Yeah. Yeah, I really agree with that attitude. I mean also even just like working on this project. 
there are a lot of questions of people just being like, well, what's the, what's the point? What's the angle? What are you going to do? What do you know about this? Like, you know, and, and maybe they mean well, maybe they don't. Like, who knows? But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty open about saying, like, I'm not an expert about millions of games or millions of people, but part of that's, that's like part of what we want to do is make something that shows that it's, it doesn't have to be this really intense bubble of yes. like exclusive people where like nobody feels welcome. I don't know. I completely agree with that statement and in one of my more recent posts I wrote that like people need to step away from the mindset of you're only a gamer if you're super good at it. There is a huge yeah. social aspect and core at the yeah. center of gaming, and people overlook that. I know so many people are dismissed because they're not a real gamer or they don't play enough games, but who cares? Yeah, video games are really united good. by something. So once once you did become really really good in Smash Bros, did you did your friends who weren't like super into gaming but just wanted to play casually, did they still want to play with you? When I was really young, and I just started getting to the competitive community, so learning all the tech skill and whatnot, which will usually let you win or have an absolute advantage over someone who doesn't know about it. I remember with some of my guy friends just being a little salty and annoyed ah, I was just beating them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, I've been to my college's, I remember going to my college's gaming club, and I was doing this tactic called wave dashing, which is just moving around, shuffling around really quickly. Yeah. And um, someone told me I was cheating and ruining the game. And I was like, oh, how? Like, okay. <laughs> you got the same controller everyone else has. That's funny. How did you actually discover? Like, where did you learn the techniques that you used? Did other people teach you, or did you? Um. Like, how, do you remember? Some of it is on YouTube, but for the most part, people taught me. But also, you gain a lot of knowledge from consistently and constantly watching matches on YouTube. I remember, okay. like, I yeah. had a little notebook that I would take notes, like, how does really? this character do against this character? What stage? How does it affect this match? Yeah, and all that. That's kind of cool, like that you got so I don't know, like organized about it. Like, I'm gonna figure out what they did, and then I'm gonna plan it out. That's cool. 